Welcome to Colleton Clocks. This is the home of my clock museum. I have what I firmly believe is the largest collection of working clocks in the world. 3,652. Come on in. When I found out that the biggest collection in the Guinness Book of Records they get was 1900 and something, under 2000 anyway, and I thought, oh gee, I've obviously got the biggest. So I actually wrote a couple of times, I actually wrote a letter, and I think I sent an email as well. And I expected to somebody from the organisation would come here to verify, but nobody ever has. And so I actually just gave up. Um, it's not really all that important to me. I know I've got the biggest one in the world. <laughs> oh, that sounds a bit rude. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Victorians loved to have things that scream at you, I am rich! Go through here into the other room. Uh, at some stage I'm going to have to start crowding up the walls and putting more on the walls, otherwise I might, oh God forbid, I might have to stop collecting. <laughs> I don't think I'll do that though. <laughs> a few years ago I had a visit from the curator of a clock museum in the Black Forest area of Germany where this was made. And she had a one look at it and said, no, that's not a, it's not a replica, that's the real thing. I said, well, how much is it worth? She said, about 10,000 euros. <laughs> Woohoo! So, another win. <laughs> Although, having said that, the, the value of the clock doesn't really mean much to me because I've got no intention of selling them. So, uh, it's irrelevant uh, as far as I'm concerned. Probably not to my son because w w when I die and they become his, then. I imagine some of the more expensive ones will be, will be sold off before I'm cold in the grave. <laughs> you see the long, the long clock above the cuckoo clock and with a pendulum? That one tried to kill me. And I've never ever been anywhere near that clock ever since. And that's 12 years ago, 12 and a half years ago. So it's a Attempted, attempted murder. To me, battery clocks have got no soul. They're just timepieces and that's it. I could get rid of these, all of these, tomorrow and I wouldn't feel any sort of pangs of regret. Whereas if I had to get rid of any one of these, it would be a very, very hard job. I don't really know why I particularly like clocks. Um, the only thing, the only explanation I can give, I can give you is that the, the first clock I bought, when I got it home, it wasn't working properly, and so I opened the back door to look at it and got really, really interested in the, in the way that it worked. Do you remember a Russian cruise liner called the Mikhail Lermontov that sank in the Marlborough Sounds? This comes from the crew quarters of the Mikhail Lermontov. You'd have to be really stone cold sober to tell the time on this clock. Um, it's no use going to the pub and having a few pints and then trying to tell the time because you go cross-eyed. That comes from a Japanese World War II submarine. This comes from Tai Happy Railway Station. I've done it mainly to keep history alive. Because I think it's important uh, to remember that up to the 60s or 70s, the 1960s or 1970s, a clock was a part of the furniture of the house. It was a beating heart of the, of the, of the family. Uh, and uh, if, if you've got, a, like say, an old grandfather clock or a mental clock ticking away, it's, 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 it anchors the family back to reality and back to their, their heritage. I, mean, I, I know I'm, I'm sounding pompous, but that's what I—that's what I feel. That's what I feel. <laughs>